So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Chris Berger. I'm a technologist within Intel's SDN um, division. I'm also the chair of the ODL marketing work group. And what we're going to talk about today is um, actually a executing against a vision that, um, and a term that you've heard over and over again here at, at, uh, at the event, and that is S3P. Um, testing ODL for stability, for scalability, for security, and for performance. And that is such a big topic, actually, that I've brought along two engineers with me and I'm going to quickly introduce them. Uh, Sandeep from HP, as well as uh, Marcus from Intel. And all three of us are going to engage in you with, with, uh, with a conversation about this topic. How do we actually test ODL, not only at the component level, but also at the system level? And that's where you find uh, the meaning behind the title for the session. So what are we going to talk about today? Essentially, uh, we're going to start the conversation with a review of where we're at. What is the status quo that we've accomplished with lithium? Then we'd like to structure a conversation with you around two new concepts that we're going to propose to the community in, in, uh, with regards to improving the, the way ODL is tested in the future. Some of them are going to be, we believe, implementable within the beryllium time frame, but some of them are probably more directional of where we'd like to see the, the test effort evolve. And these two um, activities are actually very simple. One of them is to test ODL at a system level. And for many of us who have done um, software testing, you know, system level testing has a particular meaning, right? It, uh, it involves testing the system on the test or the software on the test from multiple vectors at the same time. The second key idea that we're going to talk about today is to develop profiles, um, effectively a set of test methodologies and test scripts um, that are specific to particular use cases, right? What we have talked about, what we've heard at the, the conference today and, and yesterday was that there are use cases that you as a community have prioritized as uh, key use cases for ODL. NFV is one of them. Campus is another one. Uh, the data center is another one. And we're gonna provide some food for thought and hopefully some discussion along those kind of proposals to structure our test effort to more closely align with key use cases that you as the uh, community have identified. So um, another point that I want to highlight is that we don't have all of the answers here. This is meant to be a directional discussion around a number of proposals. So if you have any thoughts, comments, input during the presentation, by all means, we don't have to wait until you know, the end and when the distance to the cold beer is getting shorter and shorter. Um, let's have a uh, conversation here and, uh, and do that. And with that, I'll just uh, hand it off to Marcus. And he's gonna start uh, the conversation and go into more details on the current um, <clears throat> state of affairs uh, with regards to CI testing. Hello, my name is Marcus Williams. Whoops. Whoops. I just got uh, Marcus Williams, I'm a network software engineer uh, with Intel. I work on the SDN controller team working on Open Daylight. Um, I just, so I'm hopeful that this is accurate, but since this change, uh, community is ever changing, I, I've, I actually had to change the slide about a half hour ago after I saw an uh, actual presentation at an OpenFlow program, because I hadn't actually known about a couple of the tests, but. I guess what I'd like to say is that there's currently a limited amount of scalability, st uh, stability, security, and performance testing happening in open daylight right now. Um, but going forward, it's going to be ever important for people adopting open daylight for them to have information about um, how open daylight performs in these key categories. 
So we know Open Daylight's uh, it's an open flow controller. I mean, it, open flow is the core of SDN, and so uh, the fact that most of the tests are open flow centric is, is pretty, it makes sense. So historical and current S3P testing um, are mostly uh, focused on the open flow plugin. So uh, from what I know, there are around six tests that are doing scale or performance or um, uh, stability right now currently in CI. Um, there's available performance numbers using Cbench and OpenFlow 1.0. There are also tests that use Mininet and do scale tests. There are also end-to-end -end REST API tests that test the OpenFlow uh, using the REST API. Uh, <clears throat> but there are limitations with the current ways we're testing. And when you put other plugins in the, the software stack, that will change the equation. And right now we're pretty, pretty single-dimensional single when we're testing uh, these, uh, when we're using these test tools and when we're using, like, say, one plugin that has certain dependency chains and we don't have OVSDB or SFC in that software stack, it gives us limited information. Um, there, are, there are manual tests outside of the OpenFlow plugin that people have been running, uh, one-off tests and OVSDB. I know there are people running scale tests, but they were using this command line commands, they didn't put it in CI, um, and so it's, it's limited in its use as far as the community and, and using those numbers over time. Um, I'd like to go to an example of like one of the tests that's currently in CI. So this is the OpenFlow Southbound performance test. Jamo's in the crowd here. He actually wrote the code for this. Um, so I just wanted to use this as an example of, uh, this is great work that's happened in the last six months. We didn't know anything about what, what Open Daylight was doing in performance before, about six months ago, I guess I'd say, lithium, not lithium, helium time frame. Um, so this is great work and it's, it's a long way coming. But what I'd like to say is that the, there are limitations. For example, like I said before, OpenFlow 1.0, there's, there's no TLS involved. And most implementations are moving on to use OpenFlow 1.3. If you're using a real life use case, you'd probably want TLS involved. So this is, uh, in some instances, limited. The, the, use, the usefulness of this is limited in some ways. And so I, I think that what Christian Berger is talking about and what we'll talk about later is we want to actually take this test and combine it with uh, further parts of the software stack so that we can get more of a multi-dimensional. What happens when you put in something else into the mix that could affect the performance of this plugin, or this plugin could affect the performance of something else. I'll go to the next slide, which is just a, it's a scale test, and I think Sandeep did most of the work on the scale tests that, that are here. And there's, uh, I believe this, there's another person, I, I can't think of off the top of my head who did it, but if you look at the first um, graph, you can see the max number of switches that Open Daylight can support with the OpenFlow plugin, but you can see that it's, it's leveled off. It's right at the top, it's at 500 switches, but that's actually not a limitation of ODL. That's a limitation of the test, maybe the test design or the test number. There could be, and I think I remember reading the test where it actually scales only up to 500. It doesn't try to go up. It's actually a question. Oh. So I can comment there because I've sure. gone over 2,000. Yeah, yeah, so I was actually gonna, that's the next yeah. point I was gonna make is that I've heard people go up to 1,000. If you went to 2,000, then it makes perfect sense. I mean. That ODL is not limited to 500, but our current uh, CI test is a bit limited. Um, and I think it's just, there's probably some code that needs to be changed to actually make it get there. But then the other part of it is just using Mininet. So it's scaling with Mininet. Um, and I think it's, if you told me, was it correct that you told me that it was using a, a linear topology? Is that? Yep. Uh, so that can cause problems because you have all the links and, and it's driving the CPU usage up. And so at a certain point, Mininet is going to get overwhelmed and not be able to emulate more and more switches. So I think it, in some ways it's limited. Um, I'm actually working on a, a scale test that uses uh, Docker, which is a little bit different methodology, and I'm hopeful that that will help solve some of those limitations. But I guess what I'd like to point out most is that it's a single dimension test, again, that uses one plugin, and it's, it's not using a system. It doesn't tell you what performance would be like if you're using SFC. I think that, 
and Sandeep can tell you more, but I think that it's the connection to the switch. Then we verify in the, uh, the open flow inventory that the switch is connected. When we disconnect the switch, we verify it's disconnected. But yeah, actually, this test uh, was created by Luis, not me. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I did the oh. other one. The whole okay, <laughs> Luis. Then Luis can tell. Yes. Me. Um, okay, so So it's making sure the controller is not dead. It's making sure that we bad things aren't happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. Uh, so a te test tool limitation. But yeah, I thought it was one or the other. That there was a, either we just needed to up the limit of the switches, or there was an actual test tool limitation. I didn't know the exact answer, but. Uh, um, but the, but the other one is not a tool limitation. It's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fact that we're at zero um, max number of hosts right now, at least the last test run, I, I pulled these yesterday from the CI environment. Um, there's some kind of problem. I, I, I don't know if it's code problem or if there's Yeah, it's a problem. problem with the host tracker. Uh, it's not learning hosts um, when I try to scale it up. So yeah. I need to look at it. But I think, I think that in general, if you look at the last two slides and you think about what do you know more about Open Daylight, you do know some more. And I think that this is great work. That It's a long way we've came. Um, but uh, if you're trying to deploy this and if you're trying to figure out if this will work in your environment in a certain use case, I think that there's more work to be done. And that's why we're proposing that we do something more on the system test level. And with that, I'd like to hand it off to Sandeep uh, to talk more about that. Hello, uh, my name is Sandeep. I work for HP. I've been doing uh, system testing for HP's uh, proprietary SDN controller for a couple of years now. Uh, trying to get some foot of steps on this ODL. I committed a few tests here. Uh, the last one, the right hand one, is mine. <laughs> so there are other, one more, another one like link scale testing also, which is not shown here. So uh, today I want to talk about what uh, I think is system testing. Uh, there could be many definitions, but uh, what I think is system testing is what I'm going to discuss and why it should be done. And uh, some proposals, uh, some thought-provoking stuff so that you know, we can start some discussion tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> as Marcus mentioned, Scale test or performance test, what we do now is a single dimension test, which is like only one feature at a time. We're trying to scale. But system testing is uh, multiple dimension, multiple transactions at the same time, which is kind of a real deployment scenario. So uh, if you increase uh, the uh, transactions uh, and we go at high load, and then we call it as uh, stress test. And then, uh, so to me, uh, system testing is not just about uh, passing them some test case, but it's also about observing how the system behaves. Uh, uh, let me give one example. Like, uh, I did a ping test, uh, and then what I figured out was ping was all passing fine, and I looked into the logs, and then I found that there are some exceptions, and that exception said, error inserting flows. So then I figured out that uh, at some point of time, because of some stress, there was a case where packets were not programmed, sorry, uh, f the pings are not going through using uh, flows, but it was going through packet flooding. And that was a real bug, which is very difficult to catch in uh, this kind of situations. Uh, like Mininet, uh, when you do a ping, ping all test, it just says it's uh, pings or not. It doesn't say whether the pings have uh, gone through using uh, um, flow mod insertion or packet flooding. So, but it makes a big difference in our testing. So, so uh, my expectations from uh, system testing is no matter what I do, no crashes. And uh, so I could push the system to a very high load 
and then it can happen that the whole system doesn't function uh, for a while, but when I release the load, it should be back functional. That's my expectation. So, um, uh, so why I'm doing uh, system testing? So uh, scale test, performance test, all these gives us some fancy numbers, but uh, in real deployment, we can't expect that numbers to be true. So my goal is to find operational limits when I do system testing. Discover very complex bugs. So when I have seen many situations where uh, <coughs> the features are working pretty fine, but the moment I introduce a system test and there is a, a interaction between multiple uh, code, multiple plugins, it falls apart. So, so I get a lot of very complex bugs by doing system testing. And uh, thirdly, I want to understand which task is taking more CPU resources or memory resources, et cetera. Like uh, uh, earlier days when uh, we used to do switch testing, we had spanning tree, it used to consume a lot of CPU. So here also there should be some guy who consumes a lot of CPU. So we figured that out. So once we understand how and uh, all these uh, plugins work, how much resources it requ requires, we can do tuning. We can re recommend customers, hey, you want to increase the performance, you need to do these, these, these tunings. Like you need to increase the heap size, you need to have some thread affinity for a task. Or from a controller perspective, you, need, you can even adjust priority of a task, if you could. And also, uh, we want to identify uh, overall system configuration. When we say we want to have some thousand switch deployment, what should be the system configuration? So, should, what are the plugins in, should be which should be installed uh, for a particular case? Then uh, it should run as a bare metal or a VM. The host OS on which the controller is going to run, very important. Then uh, how much CPU and resources, other resources I have to provide, whether uh, for that scale number, will I be able to support um, high availability too? So, uh, and then uh, there's al always been a discussion on how much uh, you know, we can scale, you know, for a, let's say Beridium uh, Lisa is going to come now, uh, where should be uh, aiming at? And then uh, we should, I think continually doing uh, some discussion on this one too. So, uh, so what we are trying to propose here is uh, some uh, identify some deployment characteristics, uh, like uh, for example, campus versus data center versus NFE. So, a campus will have its own plugins versus a data center. So, identify them and characterize them. We'll find. Uh, some uh, test requirements and methodologies for each profile, and then uh, test accordingly. And uh, so what should be the acceptance criteria for each profile to be you know, uh, uh, tested against? Then uh, finally, when we do all these testing, we uh, capture all the configurations, uh, and then uh, the test cases, test results, and document them. It should be available to the community, uh, and then they can understand, read and understand what we did, and then uh, they can give feedback. Uh, it's a good, it'll be good learning for app developers too. Yeah. No. No. Uh, it's just testing profiles. Testing profiles. Testing profiles yeah. And we'll provide some examples, actually, of, um, of each one of those. Yeah. So again, this is just a proposal. Um, we can talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, I just got up some uh, campus scenario. Uh, let's say we have a campus uh, running some northbound applications. Uh, there are security apps, uh, VoIP calls app, layer two, layer three switching app. So what we're trying to do is, we understand what these apps are going to do with the controller, or what resources of the controller are, being, are going to be used, 
and then we come up with some uh, test vectors. So, so in this case, this is a very simple example. Uh, I know I have to increase the switches. I know how to increase the links. Uh, I, I know how to uh, uh, increase the host. Then uh, whether the topology should be looped or no loops. Then uh, HS scenarios you need to test. Uh, we need to uh, do failure tests and then fail back, uh, et cetera. Then uh, uh, regularly we should be targeting at what kind of activities these guys uh, uh, will do, the app guys will go, do on the controller. So, so from a campus point, I, I can nail down like roaming is a very common um, scenario. So we need to try to trigger roaming cases for hosts. Then, uh, then uh, new host login. It could it could be like um, uh, there there is a campus, uh, there is an examination, and there is a, a lot of guys joining uh, the exam at nine o'clock in the morning, and then uh, so uh, the rate at which the host can be connected to the uh, controller should be tested out at uh, those kind of load. Then uh, how much host traffic the system can handle. Uh, so uh, from uh, one of the vendors here I uh, talked to, they were saying there should be a lot of uh, <clears throat> uh, like 100,000 flow writing per second, which is what you know, some people are targeting it. So we should be targeting it a uh, lot of northbound activity tests also. We should be targeting it like uh, uh, doing rest calls. We should be targeting as making uh, uh, sample apps, Java apps, on top of the controller, which will do um, uh, uh, rest calls, uh, which is another way of accessing, and then RPC too. So topology changes, uh, that's a common thing campus networks. So uh, I've seen a case where uh, we had uh, topology, frequent topology changes, and then controller loses track of all the whole network. It's very difficult, it's very difficult for it to uh, get all these topology events and uh, compute the new topology every time. So, so that's a big concern. And GUI access. So this is about uh, campus deployment. I hand it over to Marcus uh, to talk about uh, some other scenarios. Thanks, Sadeep. So I'm going to talk about a data, data center use case testing profile. Um, I just want to put it out there that uh, Intel doesn't really have any products associated in this space. So whereas Intel might, I mean, HP might have some concrete experience in real, real life uh, deployment of, of their scenarios. We, don't have that yet. What we'd like to do is uh, figure out a, a useful approximation of how we can test this so that we can uh, give people a controller that will uh, have usable performance in whatever the application they're using it for. So, but I guess the way I would set up a, a data center test profile is, is on this slide here. And there are many other ways to do it, but I would have a, a ODL controller providing network virtu virtualization using OVSDV Netvert and it'd be connected to OpenStack as a cloud orchestrator. <clears throat> You'd have the OpenFlow plugin in the mix. It's a dependency of OVSDB, but it's also important for um, controlling the network, obviously. Service function chaining to chain together service functions that would be used in the data center, intrusion prevention service, load balancing, web server, so on and so forth. Um, and if configuration requires these plugins, I don't know why I have it uh, up there for the second portion, but essentially what I, I think we need to do is think about more how it's being used or how it would be used um, and how we can design system tests around testing the performance, the scalability, the stability, and then finally the security and this performance or in this profile. Because right now, I think, I mean, obviously we're just getting started with our, our testing, but I think we need to expand and we need to target something more along these lines. Uh, the next testing profile that would be similar but not the same, would be an NFV system test profile. It would also use service function chaining just because that's a useful uh, tool in this kind of a setup. It would be a GLI, it would be a GI LAN use case, but there's a couple others you could do, VCPE, VEPC, um, and GI LAN is basically a mobile, uh, mobile network that you're, um, you're using service function chaining to make it dynamic and virtualize some of the service functions. But you would have like 
service functions, it would be like deep packet inspection, video optimizer, NATs, load balancers. You put them in a chain and then you dynamically associate the traffic to travel through the chain. Um, and key to using an NFV system profile would be S3P testing in general, but you definitely want to have it in a profile that allows you to test things that are key to NFV. But it might require testing using like a high-speed data plane, um, accelerated OVS, like Intel uh, DPDK. Or, but the profile characteristics are likely proprietary or confidential right now because it's kind of the secret sauce of the telcos, for example. Uh, that's how they make their money is how they set up their internal networks to uh, change over time, provide services, and so on. So I think it would be harder for us to define a profile, but I still think it's worth trying to find something that's a useful approximation of a real life uh, scenario. Um, and then uh, running S3P testing based on that. Um, with that, I'd like to hand it off to Christian to go ahead and wrap up. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, as I was saying at the beginning, um, this is a this is a conversation that we want to have with the community. We have Daryl, we have Lewis here, who has been doing testing for ODL from before there was ODL. Um, <laughs> so um, there's a couple of uh, things that we wanted to discuss in, in addition to the directional input that we're giving here. Um, first of all, you know, coming from from the software world, system testing is something that's very natural, right? And the big question is, does it make sense for ODL now, after the third release, to start developing um, expertise, associated resources with it, approach the community, um, and engage in that direction? So I see a lot of people nodding, right? Um, but you know, there's always the situation also that you know, the rubber has, has to hit the road. Right. Um, the second one, uh, the second hypothesis that we're testing here is with now the, the greater focus of, um, of ODL becoming more associated with production level use cases, right, is how do we evolve the focus and the mission of the integration team, there are, love to get your feedback on that, to actually reflect that. Right? We're not at the stage where ODL was just a bunch of bits. Now it runs in the AT&T network. Right? So how do we um, evolve as a community to reflect the evolving change, changes of, on, and, and usage of, of ODL? And then the, the, there's some, some more pragmatic um, questions. And you know, having gone through this with OpenStack or some, some other open projects is who, when, and how do you decide on system limits, right? Uh, we can test individual scaling factors or individual factors to very high scale, but if we're really trying to test to an operational limit, is that something that we should have a survey on with an <laughs> integration test team, right? Um, should we make this, for example, a question to the advisory team, right? And, or the TSC, right? And again, I'm not saying that we have all of the answers here, but we definitely would like to start that conversation. Um, in many projects, that uh, ownership is also within the integration team, right? So the integration team is not just chartered with um, executing against a defined scope, it can also change the scope, right? And uh, you know the the way ODL works today, the plugin teams have a lot of flexibility to define their own functional tests, right? Um, those again have some um, impact on what the operational limits are, right? and. Ultimately, I think one thing that certainly from an HP and also from an Intel perspective, we want to get to um, and like to articulate as a goal for Beryllium is you know, what are the minimum, goal, uh, minimum acceptable criteria for S3P for that release, right? So 
So lots of questions, actually. I, I see you thinking, uh, Luis, what are you? But the question. That's right. Yeah. Right. I like the idea of the honest here. Mm -hmm. This is, I got the connection here with the use cases that we are trying to do the internet policies and what. Three to five use cases. Not enough just to do testing the plugins and application alone. We need to have full use case, campus, energy, data center, whatever, and then test those. Right. Well, wow. <laughs> so so let actually let me before we go into the technical details, um, I I understand that the tests have to come first, but um, I think the the question before is should there be minimum release gating criteria for beryllium, right? And at the moment. That, that's fine. Right. But, but to, to some extent, is at the moment, the release of lithium was not gated, and I'm just putting this out, by having any kind of performance. Right? So the, the, the question is, should that change for beryllium, that unless there is a performance, whatever it is, right, we will not release beryllium. Absolutely, right. So how you can say in the beginning, I want this to support 1,000 switches. I don't know CPU, RAM, what are the conditions, yes. and so on. So, so it, with the minimum um, crit, uh, gating criteria, you have to have a golden configuration almost, right? Exactly, right. And, and create configurations that resemble real-world test well, scenarios. That, that right. Idea is awesome. so right. That I totally support you know, so Okay. So there's. So in my mind, mm -hmm. the companies that are involved in open daylight who have their own proprietary controlling C4. Right.
We agree. We agree. That's that's ideal, right? That's why we have it on. Right. Rio has definitely has some, some interesting tests, right? There are other projects out there. But I mean, this is, this is one of the, the great things now with you know, Sandeep uh, being here and, and you know, other <laughs> uh, members coming together that have, again, an experience base from their proprietary STN controller that we want to leverage here. But there are other actions, right, that we can drive either through the board level or the TSC level, um, the advisory group level, and the user group. And, you know, as, as from a marketing perspective, I need this kind of stuff to help market ODL as well. Right? And, and I would say, uh, to Jamo's point, oh, did you have a question? I would say, to Jamo's point about other controllers and whether or not we need that performance, I don't think that we need that performance. In fact, I'm not terribly concerned with comparing to other controllers, although it's useful in some sense. What I'm more concerned about is giving information to people who want to use, take this and use it as a solution that we have this amount of performance that's helpful in this use case. So, um, yeah. And if we set a minimum after we already know where we're at in that range, then I think it's helpful for us as a, as a community. But. Sure. But how helpful is that? Yeah. Right. yeah it's, yeah. Right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, as a software developer, I have a slightly different take. Okay. My view is like, what kind of a software you know, profiling does this do for you? Let's say you come up with a number saying it does X number of flows per second. I would like to know where, my, where this time is being spent. Like, do I run some unnecessary blockage in my code? Yeah, so that's. An algorithm that needs to be improved upon. Sure. I was going to say, that's, that's definitely part of the idea. And it, yeah, we do this already, but yeah. We've been trying to get people that have that exact interest for a while now. Like, you know, in all of these events, we're like, hey, uh, if you come out with a Dell profiler and some background, you could probably find some performance bugs real quickly and look like a hero to the community because we haven't done very much of that. So. <laughs> Right, and and right, and and and, and this is the, right. So you got your recruitment pitch in, uh, well done. But this is what what Sandeep was talking about, right? Especially with system test, right? This is where you really get, um, you know, information on heap memory allocations and, and you know things that are stepping on each other, race conditions, and all of that, right? So, so that's that's really where, again, the system test element on, and focus. It's going to prove valuable, much more valuable than what we do today. So okay. Another mm -hmm. point, from, from my past life, I've done this, right? Testing mm -hmm. system, and then when the product went to the customer, it went Right. What happened was <laughs> the customer had misconfigured it, and nobody on our side had done a negative testing at scale. Uh, so mm -hmm. what we had was a memory leak, like, so this is our embedded system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a that's actually a great point. And again, if you have particular you know idea or proposal, I think you will find the community is is very open to that. <laughs> um, that oh yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So there's a, is that again? The same applies to security testing, right? Um, putting the system under attack was a DDoS attack, right? And seeing how many open flow rules are actually being programmed. So so yes. Um, but we got to start somewhere, right? And this is a conversation about direction, right? Right. And step by step, right? For beryllium right now, again, our proposal is we should, you know, since we're in the starting pages, uh, starting stages of, of um, defining, right, how we're going to get the beryllium release out is 
for the integration team as a proposal, right, as input, let's focus on system testing, right, and let's focus on creating some test configuration to, um, to reflect real world use cases, right? Um, and then um, if we can engage with other partners, let's see whether it makes sense to have minimum gating criteria. Right? That's, that's really in, in a nutshell. That's what this session is all about. Okay, questions in the back. It depends on the scenario. So uh, you asked me uh, where that automated. Uh, uh, so from an ODL perspective, I can talk about um, only the scale and performance testing are automated right now. The uh, system testing, uh, multiple transaction, those tests are not automated. Yeah, it's a big challenge to automate it. So that should be one of our big uh, challenges in doing this testing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Definitely should. Yep. <coughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Second question in the back. I, all right. Actually, behind you first, and then I'll. I'll yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. Garbage collection. Sure. In Java. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And, and again, some of the. Yeah. And some of the profile, you know, comments, profiler comments that, that, that Daryl had, you know, maybe are aligned with that, right? Right. Okay, we had one more question. Oh, actually, now in the back. <laughs> yeah, and then. Restart. Uh, you're talking about uh, your talk experience with my proprietary controller? For uh -huh. ODL, are there any specific scenarios? No, we, we have never tried the system level testing uh, for ODL. Uh, but I can tell you from experience, restarting controllers can really cause troubles for the whole uh, system, when, especially when you have HA, have multiple controllers, and then you restart one controller. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big, big deal. Yeah. So, and, and certainly, you know, some of the things that are on wish lists uh, for from Colin, right, around clustering and then HA, they will again stretch our our test efforts in, in, in new areas as well, right? So to some extent, we will always be a little bit in the catch-up position, right? Um, but the purpose of this session is to, to kind of put a directional framework together so that we can anticipate the test needs um, of, the, of the next release. Okay, question, we left, yeah. That, so. that's, that's a great, actually, I can maybe take a first okay, step sure. and yeah, then yeah. mark us up. So yes, yeah, there's, there, there's a lot of excitement about the, the focus of OPNFV as a midstream project, right? Um, and certainly from a mission perspective, right, focus on funk test and, you know, integrating in an entire stack and, and characterizing it for, for telco use cases, great. But ODL is not just used for telco, right? That's why the, the configurations and for campus, for IoT is, is important, right? For NFE, sure. Um, hopefully, you know, with the Brahmaputra release, we will actually get something that is a little bit more meaningful. So far, Arno is, it's like if it's, it was a house, you know, they're putting in the sewage pipes, right? It's a first step in, in building a code stack, right? So. So the other thing is, you know, as a community, should we be building a, a dependency 
on another project to characterize our stack. I don't think that's actually the right policy going forward. Right? Within, it can be, you know, it can augment what we're doing, but it should not be that we're kind of outsourcing <laughs> the characterization of ODL to another project. Yeah, you could, no, you go ahead. I mean, I'm sure you're going to say basically what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so there's been a bunch of conversations going on uh, in the last couple of weeks around this, specifically this topic, around um, doing uh, performance testing in the, in the open ESC context, largely because they have so many labs, giant labs sitting there unused, and we have lots of performance tests that we would like to run on them. Um, and so we're, we've been kind of informally trying to figure out the right way to do that I mean, without like, you know, whether we should create a new ODL project that's focused on that, uh, put that extra overhead of another project, and whether we should do like a task force thing that's going to go work for the new project with PNP to, to do some bigger tests like that. So that's an active conversation that's going on, and we're going to be hammering it out a lot more during the uh, Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely one of the things that OPNFE has established, and there's even an Intel lab in, in Oregon, right, which is an official OPNFE lab. There are labs in China, all over the world. And uh, I guess one of the questions is how do we effectively plug into them without building an execution dependency? Yeah. More like a black box test? Is that what you? Uh, uh, so because of from, from testing, when we, for example, uh, uh, as a developer, sometimes mm -hmm. I just want that I can use another laptop to push the limits of my. So I, I don't need to have a, a full meeting net uh, functionality just to test some cases, to test the performance of some, some specific cases. I just need that if this is the REST input and then it tries to install a flow, then I can check the packets that are going out from open daylight and inspect those packets. Like a, like yeah. a quick test kind of thing? Yeah, yeah but pushing for performance also. Hmm. That's I, there is a test that I believe, did you make it, John Mo? It's basically using the REST interface to install an open flow, uh, flow and then measure the end-to-end -end performance. Yeah, But as a concept, right, for especially application developers who are not in the guts of ODL, having a simple yeah, quick test, you know, for lack of a better term, Good. that's actually a great idea. Yeah. Good. All right. So, again, um, this presentation was meant to spur interaction, right? Um, it's, it's directional. And... Certainly what you're seeing here is also the commitment from both HP and from Intel to continue to provide um, input into the integration team to dedicate resources um, along some of these lines, right? Not just to create tests, but also create tests with a purpose. Yeah. I think one of the mm -hmm. is that what is the is the, the definition of this, uh, this case is so, uh, I, I know because in the past, any attempt to do this uh, has Sure. And people think that plugins have to be in the campus because uh, they think the campus is good for them. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's something that we couldn't have some conversation. And in the end, if there is no agreement, I believe in integration or someone to say, okay, this is the decision. Yes. But this time, we cannot just stick to it. That's right. Yeah. But I think it's very interesting to start there because when we have a broad definition of what is a campus use case or what is data security use case, after that, we can do other things. That's right. That's right. All right. Great. With that, um, thank you very much for the very active discussion and uh, for your input. And we're all here for further questions. <laughs> all <right. laughs>